that which we persist in doing becomes easier to do. Not that the nature of the thing has changed, but that our power to do it has increased. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I am so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to chat with you today. And most importantly, I am so excited for this quote. I love it. That Emerson quote is very powerful. It actually got a lot of meaning to me because of a gentleman named Heber J. Grant. You can find that information in our show notes as well. But he's also a He just lived this quote and it was just so powerful, but Emerson is the one who said it and it's a great quote that ties directly to our conversation today. Now, before that, as always, ladies and gentlemen, you know I got to give shout outs. That's just me. That's just what we do. This week, I want to give a shout out to Valius. Thank you so much for connecting on Twitter, for faving some of our tweets and for just being out there. Appreciate that. Kenneth, appreciate the love for connecting and for sharing our stuff Jenna, welcome to the Sales Evangelizers. Thank you so much for joining. Steve, also welcome to the Sales Evangelizers. That is our private Facebook group. Shh, for those who don't know about that, well, actually, you can join. Just go onto Facebook, search for the Sales Evangelizers. It's where we communicate, we connect, we build strategic alliances, and we learn how to just be better sellers. Also, Kylie, thank you so much. Yvette, thank you as well. And for those who like to connect with us, you can also go on Facebook. You can find our Facebook page, The Sales Evangelist. Like the page, that would be awesome. And you can also go ahead and just connect with us in our private Facebook group, The Sales Evangelizers. And if you don't want to do that, you want to go old school, you can send me an email, Donald at The Sales Evangelist. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly. Or you can just hit me a tweet, Donald C. Kelly as well on Twitter. But either way, I'd love to connect with you. But the topic at hand today is confidence and the confidence that you have when you're selling. There's a power that comes with confidence. When you are confident in what you are doing, you become believable. People are convinced that what you have to offer is great. But I want to tell you a story about how confidence, the, the other side of confidence, the, the lack of confidence, how that will cripple you from performing well. I played flag football in college. I love flag football. I mean, I can run. I'm a Jamaican and it's in our nature. I don't know what it is, man. I just we just we just can run. So ever since I was back in middle school, I always performed well in track. And I always perform well on my soccer team because homeboy could run. Now, when it came to, came to American football, flag football, I could run as well. You give me the ball and I'll run. I'll make a touchdown. However, when I tried to be a receiver and not the running back, that's when we started having problems. And you're probably like, what happened? Well, I wasn't the greatest catcher in the world. And I started to realize what it was. One of my quarterbacks pointed it out to me. He was like, Donald, you're trying to run before you catch the ball, man. Stop. <laughs> you're too fast. But there was a deeper problem once we started talking about it. I mean, to be honest, and I'd be totally upfront, I was afraid of getting hit. But listen, it's flag football. How are you going to be afraid of getting hit? You see, I was afraid, I was anticipating too much that something bad is going to happen. I was anticipating too much that I was going to miss the ball. I was anticipating too much that if I got caught, then, you know, we're not going to gain any yards. All of this anticipation, all this fear of things that are supposed to happen in the future that didn't happen, that I started to imagine up in my mind, that started to do, just started to eat at my confidence and my ability to catch the ball. I mean, all you have to do, I had gloves for goodness sakes, just put your hands up, catch it. I almost put super glue on the bad boys. Now, the whole point of me telling you the story and why it ties to confidence is because of fear. Because I was so worried about what's going to happen that I wasn't focusing on the present and on the now. I wasn't confident in my ability. I let something that was in the future, something that could have happened, some fear stop me from performing well in the now. And the moment I was able to get past that fear, the moment I was able to stop worrying about getting hit, the moment I was able to worry about and stop missing the ball, the moment I was worried, stop worried about just taking off, just focus on catching the ball and getting the job done, The moment I started doing that, focusing on the now, that's when I started to perform better. My confidence increased. When I realized I'm not going to get hit, it's flag football, I was able to perform a lot better. Now, how does this tie to sales? I've seen sellers who are just so confident in their ability to sell their product and what they had that they just seem like, I mean, they were believable. People would just flock to them. And that is the way that we need to do things. And I think a lot of that starts with our fear of rejection. A lot of us think, well, what if the product doesn't do according to what we said it's going to do? What if the 
client doesn't like it? What if they say it's too much? What if their decision maker turns it down? What if I don't hit quota this month? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? So many what ifs. What if it doesn't happen? Huh? What if we don't, none of the things that you, none of the things that you start to imagine in your mind happens? What if none of that happened? What if you started making really good money? What if they do like it? What if it performs really well? Our fear of things in the future that are not going to happen hinder us from accomplishing and doing things that could happen right now. So many of us has ruined deals for ourselves because of our fear of what's supposed to happen in the future or what we think is supposed to happen in the future or the fear that I'm not going to perform as well in the future. I'm telling you, when you are able to go into a room and you are confident, I mean, you hear a quote and you hear a story from Tommy Boy, and I know Tommy Boy is not the greatest sales movie in the world, but it's just still funny to watch. But the idea that was he could sell a catch a popsicle to a lady wearing white glove. Well, he was just so confident in his ability. That's what the, the idea behind that quote is. Not that I think you need to sell to everybody. Some people are not a fit. But the idea, though, is that confidence. Can you go into a room so confident in what you have to offer that people believe what you have to say, that people start to persuade themselves to get what you have because of the confidence that you have in that? Now, how can you increase in your confidence? Here are several things that you can do. This may sound basic, and it may sound silly and sound you know, crazy for some of you. Talk to yourself. Dead serious. Talk to yourself. Tell yourself that you have something great. Tell yourself you have a wonderful product. Tell yourself your service is top-notch. It is the best out of anything out there. Talk to yourself in a mirror. Look at your facial expressions. Body language is a huge part of selling. I'm sure right now when you're hearing me, you probably could see my body language, that I'm, you know, my facial expression in some way. You can imagine that. Why? Because I feel confident in this topic. I feel confident in this because I've seen it happen before. So the confidence that you that you give off that will come through your body language. So practice it in a mirror. Talk about your, your product, you know, to, as if you're talking to a prospect. And if you're on the phone, I'm telling you, man, it's going to kill you if you're not doing this. You need to make sure that when you're chatting to someone on a phone that you sound so convincing that they said, why didn't I have this before? That comes through the way that you express yourself. That comes through the way that you deliver your message. If you're not confident, people will smell that like a, like a dog and just rip you apart. I also have an episode coming out next week, I believe, with Jim Jacobus and Todd Irvin. These two guys are from our private Facebook group, Shh, the Sales Evangelizers. And Todd asked a topic about disk profiling, and it led to us chatting, and then we had a conversation about it and a sidebar, and now we did an episode on it. But the whole point of disk profiling is being able to understand the personalities of the individuals that you are talking to. Everyone has a different personality, and it kind of gives you an idea of how you can relate to people and how you can speak to people and how you can treat people the way that they want to be treated. So there's a part in there where Jim gives an example of how he was able to so confidently speak to a vice president of sales and express his product, excuse me, his service in a way that this guy really believed him. And he was able to match that guy's personality. That's a whole nother thing. But the whole point of this, though, was he was super confident in that situation. And we've all had those situations. I've had that. And I think I shared a story a couple of weeks ago, but if not, I'm going to share it again. I had this prospect that I was working with. I was super confident in our product and our service that we had to offer. Turns out that they had another product in line that they were using. I went in there and I was super confident. I was when I when I found that out and I, I knew about that customer, excuse me, about that product that they were that they had in house. I understood that product. I learned about that product before. I understood the challenges. So when I brought that up and how our system was different and the benefits of what we had to offer and the fact that the what they were they're overpriced for what they were paying. And I shared that because I knew that data, it was so much more powerful. I was confident to this guy and this guy believed me. So therefore, we set up another appointment. So what it comes down to is really, really tying back to the quote at the very beginning too. That which we persist in doing becomes easier. Not that the nature of the thing has changed pretty much. It's just that our ability to do it, our power to do it has increased. And the more you practice something, the more you talk to yourself, the more you sound, the more you understand about your product and about your service and understand your competitors and their product and their service, the better off you're going to sound, man. You're going to go in there. You're going to feel confident. Again, I'll read the exact quote. That which we persist in doing becomes easier to do, not that the nature of the thing has changed, but that our power to do it has increased. You are going to be so powerful the more you are confident in what you are saying, the more you are confident in what you are doing, the more you are confident in your company, 
I'm telling you, it works, it works, it works. And it doesn't matter if you're you know, a seasoned professional or if you just started yesterday. You just need to build your confidence. The more you sound confident, people are going to believe you. Take it one step at a time. Don't try to anticipate the future and say, well, what if I don't get the deal? We don't care about that. In this moment right now, you need to sound confident and you need to get them to the next step. And in order to do that, you have to be confident now. Don't worry about the end of the deal. It's just now. I need to get that next appointment. I need to get them to recognize that I know their business. I need to get them to recognize that I know that I understand this challenge and that they're wasting money or whatever it is. Now, listen, you're driving, you're out walking, you're at the grocery store, you're at the mall, wherever you are right now. I just want to let you know this, just one thing again, that this this podcast, this is, this is, I know it's powerful when we apply the things that we've, we learned here. I've been able to do a great, uh, great things over the past year or so, because I've been able to take some of the things I've learned from these guests and I've applied it to my selling career. I've applied it to the sales evangelist and the brand we're building and just awesome things are happening. And it comes down to our ability to really, really grasp and to try and to do new things. When I go out every day and I tell you to do big things, I really mean that. I mean, I, I'm super confident in each and every one of us as human beings that we have power to accomplish great things in life. And that comes from us doing. We can't sit back on the sidelines and worry and fear what will happen in the future. We got to do it now. You have something. I know you do. I know you do. You have something that you want to accomplish, but sometimes you get af- you get afraid of doing it. Is it a big deal you're afraid of going after? Is it, I mean, going off going off and doing your own business? Is it going back and getting a degree? There's something in each and every one of us. Maybe it's something unfulfilled. But I just want to let you know today that you can do it. We can go out. We can accomplish great things. We can go out and do big things. We are powerful beyond measure. Within each and every one of us is that ability. That which we persist in doing becomes easier to do. Not that the nature of the thing has changed, but our power to do it increases. I hope you go out today and do big things.